Hello, welcome to Board Games with Niramas. I'm Joseph. Draco is here as well. He's ready. We are going to take a look at some new games. So, well, it's like some of them are new, some of them are uh, less new. <laughs> However, uh, they might not be brand new. Like they just might, maybe they didn't come out just recently, but some of them did. And they all arrived from Asmodee and Nordics here, so we're uh, thankful for that. So let's uh, dive in and check out some games. That's always fun. I'm thinking we could just start off with this one here, which is a Game of Thrones betwixt. I it's a card game. I don't know what this is. Uh, I, I'm I'm really curious to see what this is all about because I I never heard. I don't know if this is like a system. I honestly haven't really looked it up either. It was just like oh Game of Thrones from Fantasy Flight Games. I want that. I <laughs> I just you know I just said yes to filming this game without knowing really what it was about because it sounded fun. So let's, uh, yeah, let's get in here. And all of these games will be filmed in some way. Some of them might be playthroughs. Some of them might just be this video right here, the unboxing and so on. And some might be that I play them with friends and so on, if they're not suited for one or two players. And then I'll talk about them in my podcast and so on later on. So uh, yeah, let's see what this is about. Wanna hold that, Draco? So, rulebook. And yeah, it doesn't seem all too complex. Let's see if I, I think I'm gonna move the camera a little bit, like such. I guess these are just other Game of Thrones games, really, from Fantasy Flight Games. So, don't know what this is. I think the artwork is pretty good. It is different, like it's not the um, TV show's artwork, like this. I mean, <laughs> that's Tyrion, I guess. I mean, Daenerys looks very, yeah. I kind of like that, though. It depends. Some games, I like it when they take photos from it. Like, it happens when I do like that, but most of the time I do prefer if it's, like, original artwork for a game or, like, at least artwork, like, you know drawings and so on instead of just you know photos from a tv show or a movie or whatever that it's based on okay so some tokens here this is like coins or something nothing really fancy and well it has dragons on it look at that what dragon coins yeah and by the way this is going to be a relaxed stream here where i just look through these things um not that Maybe not that exciting, but then again, I need to, like, I'm going to do this anyway. So I was just thinking, why not just do a stream out of it? <laughs> when when I punch these out, talk to you in the chat, if you have any questions, you know, you can do any questions, like about the channel or whatever. And we can just have a chat and, and so on. If you're watching this afterwards, you can just put in a comment if you have any thoughts or ideas or whatever for the channel and about the channel or Draco and me and whatever, whatever's on your mind. Uh, we're all friends here, so you know, just gonna go through these things and see. I'm gonna have to like, is, there's a process to this, of course. Every time I get a new game for the channel, it's like a process. Of wh where does this, you know, fit in the the overall channel, the podcast, the videos, everything? So, hmm, nice card quality actually. Feels good. Uh, these little thin cards, though. I don't like the size of cards. Because these will not, this is not standard sleeves. This is like medium or whatever it's called for Arkane Tin Man. I think it's like green for Fantasy of Light Games, something like that. Hey Jess, Jesse, is Betwixt an old game? Maybe. I, because it says, when it, when it says like that, Betwixt, I just get a feeling like, oh, it's Love Letter or it's a Ticket to Ride. Or, you know, it's like a series of, or a system of games. And... Scott a random card from another leader's hand. I don't know, maybe this game is like old Take Daddy and I don't know, maybe it's the kind of game that I don't like at all. I have no idea. I wonder about the... There's different colors here. Maybe it's different houses, I don't know. Or something like that. Card distribution, betrayal, gossip and lies, corruption, pulling the strings, nothing about... I mean, this... If it's a Game of Thrones game, of course it should be take that, I guess. Oh, here's a round structure. This is something I usually look for uh, right away so the camera can zoom. There we go. Or not zoom, focus, I mean. 
So reveal ally, reveal and read aloud the next ally, okay? Then you play influence card. Start with the first player and proceed clockwise. Leaders take turns playing one influence card or kneeling. The stop ends after each leader has knelt. Knelt, is that, a, is that how you pronounce that word, knelt? I don't know. Claim the ally. Leader with the most influence wins the bid. Okay, so there's a bid there, yeah. So I think this is, to me it looks a little bit like a, um, yeah, like you bid around the table and then you're trying to pick up these cards. Here's big cards, which I do like. It's kind of tarot cards. This is always sweet. And again, I like the quality, like the feel of the cards are good. And I like the artwork as well. And this looks amazing. Really like this style. There's Jon Snow, I guess. I really like, I like Tyrion. He looks so mean, like evil. <laughs> that smile on his face. And there's Lena Tyrell. Okay, so you have these like characters, I guess. I wonder if you have a one maybe that you're playing, something like that. And then, oh, you can get like Peter Baelish. When claimed, choose any number of councils, return a power token from each of those councils to the supply. And okay, <laughs> there's Joffrey. He looks so much nicer on that than he does in the TV show. Yeah, so there's a lot of things you will recognize here, of course, which I do like. I like, I mean, I love the theme. Oh, look at that. There's Drogon, Draco, Draco loves Drogon. It's, it's his uh, idol. And Hodor. Yeah, I don't know. I I think I'm gonna check out, I think the first thing I should do is to take a look at the rules and just try to figure out. Or maybe I should look at the back of the box actually. I'm just trying to um, figure out here if this is a if this can be played on one or two players i don't know because if it can't then it's like it moves back it's like i still want to cover it at some point somehow but it moves back in my queue because especially these days it's not it's not that often that i get to you know do something like film a game that takes three or more players what does it say oh it says three to six actually yeah that's that was my feeling that it's a um yeah well I'll t i'm gonna try with my friends this is probably one of those that will show up in my podcast later on then, uh when i do podcast episode and do a review a bunch of games when i played it all right let's uh, keep moving here take a small one so this is love letter um star wars <laughs> or it's a love letter game i guess with jabba's palace this sounds really cool i like love letter it's a fun little game and then star wars of course uh, it's a nice theme to have, so I like that it counts in this little bag. So. Let's see. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure how this works. I guess it's yeah, two to six player descend into the lair of the vile gangster Jabba the Hutt. So uh, yeah, this is gonna be really fun to try out. This is probably the first one I will bring to my friends and be like, hey, let's try this out. We all play Love Letter. We know how it works. So some. Tokens, Jabba's Palace on them, I guess. And we have some cards. Let's see what this is. So, the okay, Exalted One, my kind of scum. <laughs> Sounds like scenarios almost, something. And here's like. Okay, so here's the characters, which I assume works like standard uh, love letter. So we have like Luke Skywalker, Eliminate, whatever that is, Leia Organa, Draw and Return to Card, Lando Colossian, May Trade Hands. They all have like a, a special thing. And there's like player aid cards. Everyone can have one of those in front of them so they remember what's in the game. So here's Jabba, he's the eight. Choose another player if they have a rebel card in hand. I guess that means they are out. Yeah, so there you go. There's like rebel. Oh, that's Jabba symbol. There's like Je rebel cards and Jabba's. The Rancor, Boba Fett, Leia Organa. 
yeah, some of these are like multiples of, just like in Love Letter, I guess. Lando Carician, Mercenary, Chewbacca is here. Uh, R2D2, some Gorge, and C3PO, and Han Solo is the zero. At the end of the round, if you have this in hand, gain one victory token. Oh, yeah, yeah. These are victory, these are point tokens, really. Okay, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> I do look forward to this. We'll see when I get the chance. I don't think I need the baggies. We'll see when I get the chance to uh, play this. But I think, I mean, this is a quick little game. This will probably be the first one here that I, I uh, will try to... I mean, I guess you can play this on two. You can play um, Love Letter on two, but it's one of those games that I think usually makes, you know, better on multiple people. Star Wars, uh, Knight's bag as well. That's fun. Right, another one here that I... It's a party game of moral dilemmas. This is such a weird game. I, I, I've heard about this game before. I think it has a few years. I don't know when it came out. So this is a like Nordic edition, it's like Swedish, Danish, and so on. 2019, okay. So trial by, by trolley. Uh, I mean, this uh, this classic. If you if you're studying like morale, philosophy, and so on, it's like oh well, if you have to choose, if you're standing at that trolley switch, and you have to like oh, you can kill these people or that one. Who do you kill? Which is always a, an interesting. Um, choice or like a you know interesting morale question. I'm gonna keep the Swedish rules here. Um, so I don't know how this game is gonna work though. But I mean it's a party game, so I guess we will like take turns deciding who are we killing, who we're we not killing. I wonder if it's too silly for my game group. That's my only worry that it's like maybe you know cards against humanity style, which is not something we enjoy that much. Um, and so on. So here's some skulls. I guess it's people you kill or something. So it, it, that's that's the only worry I have here. I mean, we don't play that many party games, to be honest. But maybe this is a fun one that can be something we, you know, something we can bring out like a filler, something like that, in between the more meaty games that we tend to be playing most of the time, like you know, bigger euros and so on. Maybe maybe it's something. You know, I mean, the rules of this game is, yeah, there's not that many rules, so I don't think that's, uh, it's too complicated to get into. So uh, let's see, are all these the same? Oh, there's different like levels or whatever. Al-Qaeda operative. Uh, an intelligent talking dog. Or a single kitten on its way to be adopted. <laughs> that's, that's nasty. <laughs> There's probably gonna be some really dark humor in here as well, I would uh, reckon. With, uh, let's take a look at some of the cards here. See how the cards are. You know, tell me, let me know in the comments or in the chat if you have played this and um, if you, you know, what you think about it. So the Kardashians, a thief planning to rob your home tonight. A swarm of killer bees flying straight through towards you. A deadly bear with a human brain. Okay. Uh, Robo Hitler. <laughs> okay, it's, it's, yeah, this seems to be like almost like cards against humanity style, but you had a pleasant conversation with them. Okay, maybe these are things that will affect your decision. The death will inspire a world peace movement. Okay. Okay, so we won't vaccinate the children. <laughs> Yeah, this probably these are probably things that will affect your choices, right? Yeah, I don't know. This is one of those games that I said uh, I'll, I'll take a look at because you know it's it's fun to do that time to time. Something that is like out of my ordinary sort of games to play. I I, I like doing that just as a mix. And speaking of that, here's another one. <laughs> that I, it's not really my type of game. I think I don't know. Again. Cat, game of Cat and Mouth. It says it's a fiercely competitive magnet powered pinballish game from the creators of Exploding Kittens. I wasn't a big fan of Exploding Kittens, I played it a bit. But I don't know. Again, party game style and all that. Which sometimes I really like. I, I would say I, I've come to enjoy party games more over, uh, I don't know, last years. But there's been a lot of party games that I played like on, on Zoom and so on with friends. 
So, um, yeah, we'll see. Okay, this is a nice production, I think, at least, because we have... Wait, how does this work? You're supposed to... Oh, here we go. It's like a lid there that you're supposed to open. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Exploding Kittens had a nice uh, organization as well. So here's basically... Okay. Okay, you're supposed to build a little thing here. Like a pinball area, I think. Yeah, here we go. So you're supposed to set... The, or you, yeah, you're using the box and everything. Oh, wow. The toy factor. <laughs> the toy factor is real. <laughs> Let's see how this works. This, uh, yeah. <laughs> this is something out of the ordinary. For me, a cat and its mouth. Okay, how do we let's see? How do we set this up? Okay, this is supposed to be in the middle. Can we okay, just okay, just lights in there. Wow, and uh, <laughs> some balls. <laughs> Look at that, Draco. Why is this silliness? And some balls here. I, I don't know. Are we supposed to? Are we so, yeah, we're supposed to place some walls here as well, so they don't uh, jump all over the place. Let's see how this works. This looks like something that I think some people... Well, in the right circumstances, uh, this is probably really fun. Let's see if we can... Just guessing now, but if... Probably should be like this, right? Could that be over there, maybe? Oh, it should be like this. Okay. So the box, the game box itself is like... I, I like when they do that in games. I think that's really cool when you actually use the game box as a, you know, a piece of the game. Like you're, you're taking... You're not wasting stuff, you're using the, the things in the game. Is it this way or is it the other way? Oh, it's this way. I don't know if it's flicking or... Okay, there we go, Draco. So everything's set up, I think, already. I wonder if Draco can use his dragon tail here. I don't think so. I think this might be a hard game for Draco to handle. He's gonna have to hold a cat paw. What's up with this bagging? They don't... They're like stuck in here? What's going on? Are they... Hmm, that's weird. They're like stuck in the bag. They're like a little bit sticky. Maybe they're supposed to be that way, I don't know. So I guess it's a, it's, a, it's only a two-player game, right? So one player is the, the blue cat pawn. We're supposed to, I don't know. And then you, uh, and this is the rules, I think. This is all the rules. Why does it say, it shows like it's a Swedish thing here. It's, okay. So you put the cat thing on here. You put the walls in. You put the black nose ball and three... Oh, you put them in here. Here you go. So it's the teeth. Is it three? Yeah, I don't know why we have five. Okay. You're supposed to put, supposed to put the black one... That's the nose. Wow, that really stuck in, gets stuck in there. I don't know how we we're going to... Um, okay, let's do this step by step. Like the, okay, so we we're gonna put the four yellow on each side of the board. So we each have four of these. All right, and then we have some extras. All right, so that is, yeah, it's, it's in the reserve. So we both start on zero points or something. 
How can we? Okay, so. Yeah, so, okay, so this is, okay, so let's see here. Oh, these are magnetic. Okay. Okay, now I see. <laughs> That's cool. So it's, 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 it fits there. Like the, oh, it's actually the other way around. So this is the pink player. This is the blue and it fits and it has, yeah, so that's cool. All right, so what do we do then? So we pick up the balls and shoot it, shoot them. We shoot them by putting, the, oh, okay, now I get it. It's like this. <laughs> that's so silly. And we shoot them through there. And we can shoot back yellow or white to the other side. We shoot as quickly as we can. There's no turn order. We just count down. If a ball would fly off the, the board, we will call pawn. Then both players will stop until it's restored. Okay. So we're playing rounds. You win a round and get a point if something happens. If you hit the black one, so it falls out, you get a point. If you if all three is on the other side of the board, yeah, you want to get these over to your opponent's side. Or if all eight is on the other side. Oh, wow. And then you get a point, and whoever gets to five points wins. All right. Huh. All right, Draco, let's try this out. <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, let's see if we can play this. This is so strange. So basically... Okay, Draco. So Draco is over here. He's the pink player. Draco, I don't know how you're gonna do this, buddy. He, so he's gonna, yeah. So we're we're gonna simulate the game here, which is just from my side, really. I don't think Draco can handle these components. So we put the little ball into the. Let's see if we can. There we go. We put it in here. And okay, we gotta find the right. Oh, we hit. I hit the black thing, black one, but. I think we need some. Oh, there we go. White one. It's knocked off. So you do this as quickly as you can while the other player is doing it, of course, as well. And you're trying to. Oh, this is really hard. How do I get. I mean, this is pretty much stuck here. I don't know how. It's going to have to take some force to get that one out. Oh, there we go. White one. And then I also want to get the. There we go. I want to get the yellows over to. Draco side as well, right? This is actually really, you know, it's a good, it's really stuck here. It's a good magnet, so. <laughs> this would be super fun for uh, kids, I think. But it's also pretty hard. I'm shooting too high up. Let's do it like. There. Oh, I hit the key there. Come on, there we go. I got the white one. Nice. See if I can get the other ones. There we go. Just get these through. And well, at this stage, I would already get a point because I have all the white over at Krakow's side. But I don't know how to get that black one because. Oh, there we go. So, yeah, I would get a point. And I would be closer to getting the five points on win. And Draco would be shooting these back at me full speed here, of course. Which is really hard to do if you're in a dragon. Because I don't know how Draco's gonna have yeah. Let's see. Can you do this, Draco? If I put the thing in there for you. See if I can do it like this. Oh there you go. Oh well. Yeah. <laughs> it's not it's not the best game uh, to play with a plush uh, dragon. So if you have a pet dragon, I there's other games I can recommend you to play. But yeah. This is this is a fun fun game. I can imagine that this could be super fun for kids going back and forth. Just these rubble balls, just quickly, quickly, quickly. You have to get them over to the other side. And I think everything would did fit in here, right? Oh, well, that was a cool yeah, that was a cool use of magnets right there. So I think everything was in there like that. Yeah, we should have the rules here as well. And we'll see. This is something I'm gonna force 
Mutz or some friend to play with me someday. Uh, but yeah, that's a game for Cat the Mouth. That's really, really out of my usual game park, which I do enjoy. I like just uh, trying out some silly games sometimes. This is the Bureau of Investigation. So it's like the Sherlock Holmes consulting detective system, which I haven't played. This is a game where I can play solo though. So that would be fun. Probably do a solo playthrough of it. Uh, I haven't played Sherlock Holmes. I know it's it's like, in the, I think it's in the top 100 games of all time on Board Game Geek. And I know a lot of people love that, those. It's from uh, Space Cowboys, yeah. I know a lot of people love these like Sherlock Holmes consulting detective uh, missions. So the Bureau of Investigation here, from what I understand, it's this, you know, it's like Cthulhu style. So this sounds more like something for me, actually, than than Sherlock Holmes. I've never been a fan of Sherlock Holmes, like TV shows or movies or anything. I don't know why. Uh, it never, it never really stuck with me. So rules. And this is brand new from what I understand. I think this is just, just brand new here. And so we have these like, yeah, I guess we have all of these, like here's a map. There's probably some spoiler stuff here as well, maybe, I don't know. Map of Boston. So we're gonna try to find out what's going on. Find these like cultists or whatever that are summoning Cthulhu. They, they just keep doing that every game. They never get enough of that. And we have investigations. Yeah, this looks nice. I like the look of this game. It's the Orkham Advertiser. Like a <laughs> newspaper articles here. Nice. Let's. Um, I don't think I can really. Oh, here's case two, the expedition. This was case one, the face. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna look at everything here. Case three. Yeah, top secret. I don't wanna be looking at all of this stuff. I think it's gonna like tell us when to look at stuff. Oh, look at this as well. Here's. Case four in an envelope. <laughs> it's all secret. Case five, the gunboat. Yeah, cool, cool. I, I look forward to playing this. This is gonna be awesome. I, I haven't really played that many of these kind of games. I played some exit games and some unlock. This kind of like solving a mystery game. That's gonna be fun. I'm gonna do that on a stream, I think, so that viewers can help me out as well. And it's gonna be I probably will just do the first mission so I don't spoil too much. So, but, but then you get a chance to see how the game plays and uh, what it's about. Cool, cool. It's a heavy box as well. A lot of stuff in this. And then we have a little bit of an older game, which is Sagrada. So this is, came out a few years ago. I played it when it came out. And the reason it's on here, it's because this is a Nordic edition again. Uh, as for the Nordics and all that, so I get some Nordic editions. But I never filmed Sagrada. I played it Two times, I think, maybe once or twice. A friend got it when it came out first. It's a lot of people love this, and a lot of people compare it to like role player. It's not one of these dice games that you try to order dice in a certain way. Is this okay? So I don't like when they do this. It's like a combined rule book for all the different languages. Here's like the Swedish part, but then I have to keep the whole thing. So this is basically, this is a puzzle, it's a big puzzle, and I know a lot of people like the look of this game, I never really liked the look, uh, I don't know, there's <laughs> something about this, the look of this game that I'm not that excited about, but I mean, the gameplay is fun, I'll, I'll say that. I don't remember, do you slide things in here? You do, right? Because these are double layered for the player colors. I don't remember how that works. You slide, you slide one of these cards in the right, because these are, how am I supposed to open this in a good way? Okay, it's time for a knife thing. I don't want to mess up the cards. So I'll do this instead. So basically, you're trying to match colors of dice and you draft the dice from what I remember. I do remember it being fun. I think at the time though, when it came out, and at that time, I think I played role player a lot as well. And I like role player more. I basically that, that's what, how I remember it. So you have these. Hmm. 
Hmm. I don't remember how. What is it? What car is it? Isn't the, these cars just slide in there? Yeah, it is. Just slide them in like this. No, it's not these cards. I don't know. Um. Oh, these are also. Oh, okay. So this is like Finnish and Danish. Oh, they okay. Norwegian or the other way around. Here's a Swedish card. So I should get this open. Probably don't need the other ones. I have these. This huge bag in my closet with like cards and game components from languages and stuff that I don't really need. I'm not really playing with. Oh, here we go. Here's the cards. I, I remember this. These are the ones you... Is there a good way to open these? I'm trying to find something that I can... There you go. Okay, so you slide these in here. So you have different, every player I guess have different cards. And then we're gonna try to match these, I think, with like the colors or the numbers. That's how the game works, right? And there's a bunch of these. What is this? Is this, this just like, I don't remember. If this are like, come on here. I like when they do this like uh, beads thing. Hey Bjorn. I really like when they do this in games. I, I remember when Viticulture did this, I thought it was so cool. I like it because it, it gets you, um, like it, 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 it's like a magnifying glass. So if you have this on here, then the 17 just got bigger, right? It's a cool little thing. There's also a good weight to these. I think you pull dice from this bag, right? And then you put them out somehow. And then you drop them, something like that. So they are different colors and they are the size here that kind of fits in here so you can have them it's really nice double layered stuff i don't i wonder if that was the case when i played this when it came out if that was double layered i think it was yeah nice nice production for sure so yeah i'll, I'll make um i'll play this with draco we'll probably make just a you know, standard style run through of this game at some point And where did I send that one? Uh, okay. Where did it go? Must have gone into the box. I don't know. <laughs> That's weird. I dropped one of, no, it's in here. Okay, I, I thought I dropped one of those little things. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Now I don't think, I think it's just one set like this. I don't think I need, no, I think it's the same. These are all just in like Finnish or Danish, whatever. So I'll probably just remove these then. I'll put them in my big box of game components that I might use at some point for something. If I do like a print and play or something, it's good to have those uh, in the closet. Just pull them out whenever I need. So that's Sagrada, which is, I guess, the oldest out of these. And the final game here is something that I already made an unboxing for. So I do have double copies of this. So I got the Lord of Rings, the card game. This is the the new like uh, core box, revised core set. But this is going to be some kind of giveaway for this. Uh, at the game convention I'm going to in May, I think. So I'm going to give this away there because I already have it and I already did an unboxing for it. So I'm not going to open that box. Uh, the unboxing is on the channel if you want to check it out. And I also plan to do, I am planning though to do uh, streams of this Lord Rings the card game. I really enjoyed it. I played through the campaign, uh, the first campaign. I played through it twice now. Really enjoyed it as a solo game. Really cool. But this is going to be super fun. This is going to be fun to film and play. This I will play with some friend and I will do some kind of review. It's like a kid's game. I'll probably give 
and I'll probably send it over to to my friend that has kids, so the kids can try it out, and then we I can ask them what, what they thought about it because usually that's the best way to review kids' games is to actually have kids playing it, and then you know let me know what they thought about it. So that is uh, yeah, that's the stream. Just wanted to do a sort of spontaneous sort of stream, uh, talk about some new games that showed up recently, and uh, yeah, it's fun. I hope you enjoyed uh, checking out some games as well in this relaxed stream format. Not something I do that often. I usually do like an unboxing for each game, but when it comes like this, a bunch of them and smaller games, I don't want to do like one one video where I just look at try by trolley. That would be kind of silly, I think. So yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, yeah, Bjorn, you should try the Lord of the Rings game. It's really good. Uh, I'll make, I'm gonna make playthroughs of that soon as well. Uh, again, slower tempo on the channel right now, I'm taking a little bit of a break because I had a super high tempo going for a long, long while now, like six months. So I need to take a little bit of a break, find some more energy and get back to it here uh, later on in the spring. But um, yeah, thank you for watching. Hope you have a great evening, morning, or whenever you're watching. Take care. Bye-bye.